Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Quiet Carry Waypoint. This is probably one of the most interesting knives I've ever reviewed and one of the best I've reviewed in 2020. I think I can say both of those things with no reservations. Uh, how, why is it so interesting? Well, it is completely, utterly corrosion proof, basically. Um, it, they did a really good job with that. Just every little detail you could possibly think of to make it that way. It's similar to how they did in their drift, you know, the, the model that came out before this. But they did it in a different way, which is uh, very cool and very interesting. Uh, the main thing that makes it corrosion resistance is the blade steel. It's Vanex. You don't see that hardly at all. It is like the new kind of mother of all steels. It is completely corrosion proof. And I mean, I had this in a salt bath for six hours just to try. I probably didn't have the salinity up as high as I should have. It wasn't quite ocean water. Uh, I, I will do it again with actual kind of, you know, simulated ocean water. When I, I'm going to do a comparison between this and the Spidey Chef, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to salt them both to see how they do. I'm sure they're both going to be absolutely fine. Uh, but I had this in for six hours, nothing. Didn't do anything to it. Um, I, I just wiped it off. Didn't leave a single mark. And the uh, edge retention is, according to Cedric and Ada, uh, Pete over there in Australia, that does amazing, uh, amazing uh, cutting tests and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's like a little better than M390. So you can't complain about that at all. And when you realize how great that steel is, it makes the price of this knife a bit more palatable. It is $295. It is not inexpensive, but that is not crazy at all for getting Vanex. Not bad at all. And especially all these other details. On the uh, drift, they just made it a frame lock, which making a uh, corrosion proof you know titanium frame lock isn't that hard uh, but they made a liner lock and you're probably thinking oh well that's a stainless steel liner that's gonna be a problem no it isn't it's LC 200 N which is the blade steel the Spidey chef uses um, which is completely pretty much corrosion proof uh, awesome that they did that so cool just to integrate this little this you know this little liner lock in there I do like that whole lot it does make the knife look a lot better on the other side they match completely can see it does use a wire clip uh, they also use uh, marine grade stainless steel screws everywhere and it's running on phosphor bronze washers a ceramic detent ball so it should be completely utterly corrosion proof and i'm excited to uh to put it through its paces as far as that goes excited but nervous because i really like this knife and it's 295 bucks and just putting a knife in a bath of salt water really hurts your soul sometimes but uh, this should handle it just fine so i'm, I'm not really that much worried about it uh, I do like the overall look and design of it. I just think it's very clean and simple. Uh, you have a classic kind of, my, that classic modified drop point blade, I guess called, they call it a drop slash clip point, which I guess is uh, is also pretty accurate. Um, and it, just the usual, you know, quiet carry four holes, quiet carry on the blade, Vanex steel marking, that's it. Uh, pretty simple, clean design. I think it looks great. I really like this stone wash finish i think it looks really good it's almost got kind of a one of those uh if they call it like cracked ice sort of finishes is the way it comes out i really like the look of that it also comes in a b blast and a pvd coated and as i said all three versions are available on the quiet carry website right now so uh go check those out pretty quickly i heard they're going to be released in like waves they were sold out over the weekend now as of I'm recording this on a monday morning they're back again so just keep an eye out and uh, if you want one, though, I wouldn't sleep too long on it. But uh, it's not—it is—it's not a uh, flash run or anything. But they are fairly limited production, so uh, and usually quiet carries are anyway. I can't speak specifically for this one to know for sure, but make sure you uh, you grab one pretty quick if you do want one. Now uh, let's do some specs and some size comparisons before we go on too much farther about this. We have these are all half inch squares. You have an overall length of seven and a half inches, blade length of three point three inches. You have a blade thickness of just 0 0.09 ounces, a very, very thin blade, and handle stock also very, very thin at 0 0.37 inches. And a weight of, with all this titanium and everything, still the weight is 2.78 ounces. So uh, still very, very light knife, very slim, very easy to carry. Now let's get to our size comparisons. We'll start out with our usuals. You have your Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the para three so you can see it's uh, about para three length but much slimmer 
and next up we'll bring out a slightly different Benchmade sandwich. We will do the Benchmade 940 because some aspects of this do really kind of remind me of the 940, just that slenderness of it. So it's a little shorter than a 940. And your full size Benchmade bug out. You see, it's just a, just a hair longer than a bug out. Try and line those pivots up there. Just a hair longer than a bug out. Eh, yeah, almost exactly the same as bug out. It's really hard to tell. The, the angles skew here a little bit. Yeah, about the same, maybe just a millimeter or two longer than a bug out. And two other really nice uh, titanium knives, and one that I've already mentioned. We'll just bring these out, and then we'll move on and talk more about it. We have your Chris Reeve Large Sabenza 31. A little bit smaller than that. And the aforementioned Spiderco Spidey Chef. Yeah, just based on their corrosion proofness, I'm going to be comparing these. But as you can see, this is a much, uh, much more slender, slightly smaller knife than the Spidey Chef. But I still think that'll be a fun little battle to the death. I may even do some modified things because just that they both claim to be corrosion proof. So I want to, I want to play with that a little bit. Now, as far as this knife all by its lonesome and and what do I like about it? Well, first of all, the blade. The blade is just really really nice it was razor sharp out of the box they did a great job with the sharpening on it um about 22 23 thousandths behind the edge not not crazy thin but not too bad it is a nice hollow grind i like a good hollow grind and very thin blade stock so it is still a an excellent slicer absolutely for sure um tip on it is a bit dainty but not crazily so not enough, you know, that I'd worry about it for a normal kind of EDC task. You don't want to go prying on anything with it, but you should be doing that anyway, you moron, so don't do that. But uh, it's it's perfectly fine. And like I said, just great slicers, simple blade shape, a lot of flat, a little bit of belly. Uh, that's just how I like it, and um, I really do enjoy it. If I have one little flaw with the blade, maybe it's it has a pretty good sharpening trail on it, but they kind of missed it a little bit in the initial sharpening. Not too bad. Probably because these thumb studs are in the way, and you can't remove those. So... Do keep that in mind, you know, when you're sharpening it. You, it is a bit it's a bit more difficult to get around the thumb studs, but it's not horrible. It's not too bad at all, but just I'm, I'm nitpicking tiny little things here with this because I like it so much. Um, as far as the ergos go, excellent. Uh, really, really good. It is a thin handle and not a very tall handle. So I have really long fingers. So, yeah, I do I do wrap pretty much all the way around it, but it is it is still very comfortable. The jimping is a little farther down the blade. I love it when knife companies do that. That's exactly where your thumb wants to land. You can grip it a normal saber grip too, though, and that's perfectly fine. But I really like where that jimping is. The wire pocket clip for my hands doesn't cause any hot spots at all. It's just overall very comfortable. Um, you can kind of feel the liner lock a little bit, but it's not like a, one of these horribly over jimped liner locks or anything because it doesn't need to be. And it's it's perfectly fine. Now this forward finger choil here, I guess you'd call it this little forward finger finger cutout. It is a bit small. If you have really fat fingers, you might notice that a bit more than I do. But with my relatively thin fingers, I, I fit in there just fine, and and I like it a whole lot. So Ergo's great. Carry on this thing is superb. No flipper tab, so you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about that sticking out in your pocket. I like wire clips. I saw a couple people say, oh, it's a wire clip on a $300 knife. I don't care. It works. And I think the wire clips look good. Uh, I, I, I'm, sometimes I don't like mill titanium clips. Often I don't like mill titanium clips. They're rarely deep carry like this. And some of them look cool. Some of them look terrible. Simple wire clip I think is perfectly fine, especially in kind of the theme of this knife, keeping it light, simple, you know, EDC, I think that works great. It's super light. It's very, very thin in every dimension, so it's effortless to get your hand past. It really disappears in the pocket. And I always joke around about knives that are really light like this and really nice to carry that, oh, this is probably going to go through the wash someday. Well, I don't care with this. It ain't going to hurt it. They'd let it go through the wash. Who cares? Maybe that's how I'll clean it, is just leave it in my pants and let my, my wife wash it. I am not nice to my Spidey Chef, and I do not intend to be nice to this. We'll talk more about that in the conclusion, but yeah, it doesn't take up hardly any room, as you can see. No more than like a small EDC flashlight or a largish pen. It's just a really super, super nice, a super, super easy knife to carry, and and I do truly enjoy that about it. Another thing I enjoy about it 
is the action on this thing. Um, it just, bang. It's, yeah, running on phosphor bronze. Is it drop shutty? No, not a bit. Um, but it's not bad. It's super smooth, though. It's kind of in that same hydraulic -y like the Chris Reeves Benza. That's definitely kind of what it reminds me of. It just has that very smooth action. It did come you know, perfectly centered and all that stuff. Um, I got it a bit more drop shutty by loosening it up a little bit, but then the blade was slightly off center, not horribly. I really do think it's going to break in a lot. I don't think it's ever going to be a drop shut, but I think it will get to a point over some time where I, you know, one wrist flick and it'll fall shut, which is perfectly fine with me. But as far as just opening it, it's a rocket ship. Consistently, every time it does that, a knife it reminds me of, which is a much less expensive knife, and you may think, oh, he's comparing it, comparing the action to a cheap knife. Well, because this cheap knife has one of the best phosphor bronze actions of anybody. It really does remind me of an Ontario Rat. It doesn't make quite that same bang sound, but the actual ease of deployment and the feel of the detent feels almost just exactly like a rat and yeah this is a $40 knife this is a $300 knife but trust me that's a compliment because the rat has amazing action really do truly enjoy flicking this thing open I cannot spidey flick it I will say that the, the location of the thumb studs I just can't get my thumb in there probably somebody with uh, more calloused middle fingertips can uh, can do that but for me it is purely thumb flick but I don't really have a, a problem with it. If I have one criticism with the deployment on it at all, lock bar is very accessible, but it could be more, but it would mess with the ergo, so I can see why they did that. You do kind of have to put, you know, the sort of tippy, you know, or the fat of your thumb in there and, you know, slide it over. So not too hard, uh, not too hard to do at all, but I know a couple people are probably going to complain about it, so I'm mentioning it. For my fingers, it's completely fine, but if you have big, fat, you know, big, fat, thick, muscly thumbs can you get muscles in that part of your thumb i don't know then you may have a slight complaint about it but none for me uh, none at all so obviously my conclusion on this is is that it is awesome i am i just applaud quiet carry for pushing this kind of forward because it is a bit different than what a lot of people do and i just i love the design um I understand why I guess they do the kind of quiet releases. Uh, I don't think it's for marketing to, you know, to, to put on their name, but they do a lot of other cool EDC stuff. And I've had the IQ before. I really loved it. Um, I will say at the end of this, I don't know where this is made. Uh, I know that Quiet Carry in the past, most of their stuff's made overseas. It's pretty much just a one-man operation uh, who designs stuff and has it made. I think he has a couple of staff members now, but I'm not really sure. Um, it's a very small operation, so I assume it is made overseas. I do not know by whom. Um, I have my theories, but I'm not going to say that. It's just uh, the finish on it looks kind of familiar, so I'm kind of thinking maybe, but the screws look different. It's a it's a hard thing to come to talk about. Uh, the only other complaint I didn't mention previously, because I didn't really know where to stick it in the review, is uh, the screws on this. I said they're marine grade stainless steel. Uh, they're I'm not going to say soft, so I'm going to try to get close to this. But uh, I did take this apart three times, um, and you can tell. Now, I did not use a like brand spanking new Weha T8, but one that didn't have a ton of miles on it. Um, I would say if you're going to take this apart frequently, use, use brand new bits. Uh, use really, really good ones because these screws are not super, super, super hard. They're not soft. They're not cheap. I'm not saying that. They're just not as hard as some of the other ones you're going to see. And it's partly because they're, they're trying to make them corrosion resistant, and that's the best steel to use for it. So understand the choice. So I'm not complaining too much, but just keep that in mind when you take it apart. Use a brand new, uh, brand new T8. It is super easy to take apart. There's just two T8s and it falls apart, which is awesome. Backspacers just, you know, it just has some pins in there to hold it in, so you don't have to touch that at all. It just falls, it just all falls apart. It's great, you know, super easy to work on. And this, that little LC200 end liner is is really cool. And all the milling inside. Take it apart once just to see that milling. Like I said, be careful, but take it apart. This thing is so milled out on the inside, on this on the show side, that that is why it weighs so little. Um, there's very, very thin amounts of titanium on this side. So, But yeah, screws are, those are my only complaints. Screws might be a, a bit soft, not crazy soft, just a bit soft. Uh, they kind of... They kind of miss the sharpening trail just a little bit from the factory sharpening. And if you have big, thick, meaty thumbs, you may wish for a little bit more lock bar access. But other than that, this thing is out freaking standing. Um, 
it's uh, the materials used and not just the materials used the way they use them is extremely impressive and it's a nice looking thing it's a nice thing to carry it cuts well it's amazing steel yeah uh, that's that's my conclusion it's just me clapping i've run out of words to say now i'm down to hand gestures so uh thank you guys for watching i've been brian have a good one stay safe wash your damn hands